family and friends of the Seaview Tabernacle. Welcome to this another Bible study from your host, Pastor Horace Forbes. Today we continue the theme, Eternal Life, and this will be part three. The topic for today's Bible study is the gift of eternal life. Turn with me now in your Bibles to Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Pastor Paul, read for us, please. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We thank God that it is a gift, not something that we earn, it is a gift. Yes, yes, yes. And you can't earn eternal life. It is given to you freely, so accept it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to break your word another time. Lord, as we go into Bible study now, we ask for your inspiration. We ask, Lord, that you would guide our thoughts. And for those who will be listening, we pray for their understanding and that they will apply your word to their hearts. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I would just like to ask you to like, share, and subscribe as we turn over now to Pastor Forbes. Pastor Forbes, over to you. Thank you very much, Sister Forbes. And thank you for being so gracious and so good that you have made yourself available so the Lord can use you as we work and study together. The gift of eternal life. And this is what we are going to look on today. The gift, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gift is something given. It is a, a present made. You can either receive it or reject it. But Jesus Christ has made himself available as a gift to the world. God has given us a precious, priceless gift. And this gift cannot be bought. You can't buy it. This gift cannot be earned or worked for. It is a free gift and must be accepted by you as an individual. It must be accepted as such. There's nothing that you can add to it. There's nothing that you can take away from it. The gift of God, brothers and sisters, is eternal life. No wonder Jesus said on one occasion, I give unto them eternal life. I give. So if, he's given, if he has given us something, it means that you can either receive it or reject it. And if you receive it, then you have eternal life. And the gift of God, hallelujah, is always will be eternal life. And eternal life, brethren, is a gift. And I want us to get it clear in our mind. Being a gift, it can never be obtained by works. It cannot work for it. I did not have human merit. Titus 
See in verse 5, not of works of righteousness which we have done. It is a work because you cannot work for it. It is God who gives to us eternal life. And this life that we have and that you have as a believer comes from God and this life is in his son. First and three, first and five, verse 11 and 12. And this is the record that God had given to us eternal life. And this life, John is saying, is in his son. Verse 12. He that art the son hath life. Verse 13. That you may know that you have presently eternal life. So let us look firstly an eternal life depends upon our relationship to Jesus Christ because he is the person sister Forbes that gives life this life is in his son he said I come that they might have what life that's what Jesus said he comes to give life and he is life and he is the life giver. <clears throat> he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're talking about eternal life. God has embedded eternal life in his son. And brethren, we cannot rule out the son of God. Christ must enter into your heart before eternal life can be yours. As I said, this life cannot be bought or worked for or earned by good works. Bible says in 1 John 1 verse 3, Christ himself is life. And no wonder when he stood by the graveside of Lazarus, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Not one of, but he is the life. And many people might want to inject something that there are other ways in which man can go to heaven. There are other ways that man can have life. But brothers and sisters, this life comes to Jesus Christ. This is John's uh, definition in terms of eternal life. It can only be found through faith and in faith, with faith in faith with Jesus Christ. First John 5 and verse 20, Jesus Christ, the true God and eternal life. Because Christianity is it not an idea, it is not a system, it is not a lifestyle, but is in a person, Christ, living in your heart. You ask me now, oh, I know he lives. Yes, if you're a Christian, he lives within your heart. If you lack Christ, you lack everything. Very important. It is Christ who lives, who wants to live in your heart. And if you don't have Christ, you're wasting your time, you're wasting your money, and you're wasting your energy. You can fast like the Pharisees who said, I fast, I give. That is religion and self-righteousness. Some people say, I go to church. Some say, I give my tithe. Some say, I teach Sunday school. Some say, I have been baptized for a very, very long time. 
Some might even say I am an active member in the church. If Christ is not in it, you are lacking something. You do not have this life. People boast of what they have done and what they are doing, but they fail to realize and remember that all our righteousness, sister Fab, is like what? Filthy rugs. And if you have Christ, you lack nothing. Because Christ now lives, he lives in you. He that art the Son has life, and he that art not the Son hath not life. Either you have Christ, the Son of God, or you don't have him, you have somebody else. John 17 and verse 3, and this is life eternal that they might know thee. And also, John 5 and verse 40, and you will not come to me that you can have life. And therefore, you will not come to the Lord Jesus Christ and you are boasting about life. But you have to come to Jesus Christ to receive life. But the second thought I want us to look on, eternal life design. It was designed for our redemption in Christ. He came, he paid the price. It was designed by God the Father long before you and I were born. And I'm going before the foundation of the world. Christ comes to give life. He died to give life. He shed his blood to give life. And how can Christ wash away your sin? You have to make a commitment to him. You have to invite him to come into your heart. Yes, he can enter your heart through redemption. It is only by birth, the new birth. And Jesus talking to that religious man. You remember Nicodemus? When he told him that you must be born again. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of of Jesus. So he was slain and this was God's design. Mm. He designed it for you, for me, for the unsaved. Life was designed by God the Father for man. Apart from birth, there is no life. And listen to what Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Natural birth and physical life enter the world to birth. And so is the spiritual. Man must be born again. So upon this, this design, Jesus said, and it is very important that man must be born again. And through this eternal life, it comes from God himself. And life is imparted to the believer's heart. Life is imparted or imputed to the believer's heart. You know, in First, uh, Second Peter 1 and verse 4, we are partakers of the what? Divine nature. It is saying that divinity is living inside of us. Because we have that divine nature in us. And I wonder, uh, John said, eternal life is in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Not some other person, but true Jesus Christ. And through redemption, he becomes, you become a child of God. And therefore, you are made a new creation. 
if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. And this is the transition from all life to, the, to sin, all life of sin, to new life in Christ Jesus. And Galatians 6 said, For in Christ we are made new. We are new uh, creatures. But the last thought I want us to look on, that eternal life, Declares your reception in Christ. It means that you must receive the Lord. Is that something that is endowed upon you by your parents or bequeathed to you? You individual mm -hmm. must do something. And the moment you receive Christ, eternal Life is yours. Mm -hmm. Christ lives in you and you are declared to be in him. No wonder Paul said, and this is one of my wife's verse, I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live yet not I. But what? Right. Christ lives in me. Mm -hmm. And you ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. And therefore, if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ, He lives within your heart. The question I would like to ask, do you have life now? This moment, no. Can I declare that Christ lives in me? If you have Christ, of course you have life. If you are born again, you have Christ. Do you feel exciting? Are you excited about the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you conscious, my brethren, of Christ in coming and in dwelling? Is he now living in your heart? Not in your head, but in your heart. And therefore, the wages of sin is that what you work for. But life is in Christ. And therefore, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And it comes to Jesus Christ. And if you are there listening to me today, and if you have never experienced this life, open your heart. Invite him to come in. He will come in. And he will save you. He will give you this life. Because he comes to seek and to save you if you are lost. And he has come to give you life. And praise God, he is the life giver. And many of us have accepted this life. And we are on our way to glory. And you too, if you bow your knees to the Lord. And open your heart. And invite him in. Then he will come in. And he will save you. Father, we just thank you for this life. You come to give life. Eternal life. You're a life giver. Thank God for the Christians all over the world. Who have received life. And they are on their way rejoicing. Going to heaven because of this life. And for those that might be listening even now. Maybe they are between two opinions. Yes, Maybe they have never decided. But right now, they can decide in their heart. Oh, God, invite Jesus. Oh, Jesus, come into my heart. Come in now. And he will come in. And he will save. Oh, bless your word not to us. These mercies we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen.